Yesterday I did one of the best races I've ever done, extending my winning streak in Z Racing to 15 stages won consecutively. Also I had a subscriber join me for the first time in a race, a Mr. Stephen Dukes. But it was all rather tarnished when somebody accused me of cheating. I'm going to show the highlights of the race but focus on that particular incident. So let's uh, cut to the first sort of interesting moment in the race. But first, actually, why does nobody else super took here? It's awesome. Hard start. Steep descent. Little super took. Kaboom. Northumberland Avenue, not too bad. Except Dukes does get dropped, unfortunately. And never quite makes it back on. Good seeing you, Steve. There's two climbs up Box Hill in this race, and this is the first of them. And it starts out reasonably sedate, but before too long, this guy, Foreman, makes a move off the front. And in Swift Power, he's an A grader, but he's perfectly entitled to enter this race. It's a category enforcement, so he obviously meets the criteria. So he goes off the front, and I just try to stick about third or fourth wheel, just sticking with the group so that we'll likely if not inevitable to catch him on the descent and eventually a group of about six of us form chasing him I'm just trying to stick um, third or fourth wheel until the final ascent final slope I use my feather try to catch him don't quite do it but drag four or five others with me and we form the rump pack for the final lap. Uh, there's a guy RS who gets dropped off unfortunately on the descent but apart from that we stick together. And then we poodle around central London in the usual bloody rain and me pondering how I'm possibly going to beat this guy Foreman. My only thought is we need a break but I can't imagine how I'm going to engineer one and then and Mr. Pitt comes to my rescue, decides to make a move off the front. I briefly have a think about chasing him, but then realise that's stupid. Make Foreman do it. And he takes to the front, and I think he's kind of hoping that we'll all do it together, but I don't know whether my fellow packmates have the same thought as I, but as he was so much stronger than us on the climb, then let's make him do it. But he doesn't really make much of an impression. In fact, Pitt continues to increase his lead, if anything. So we'll just skip forward to the next crucial part, which is Northumberland Avenue climb. Now I feel a bit bad about what happened next, or at least how it makes me look, because Foreman here Actually, his power drops to zero, which I did not see. And then he tries to sprint back on, and I put down the power. I thought he maybe just was caught off guard, forgot about Northumberland Avenue, as many people do, and therefore I put down the power and accelerate away. And we get a gap, get to three seconds pretty quick, and the gap to pit had been up to about 14 is now down to 11 so things are starting to look a bit more optimistic really all the way into the next and final climb I do a bit more work than is normally my want to keep the gap to foreman to about four or five seconds I was still of the view that he's likely to overcome us on the climb but he had to do a lot of work to stick even with the gap that he had and into the climb again doing more work than I normally would on the flatter sections but still concentrating on keeping that gap and he doesn't seem to be making an impression on it at least on the lower slopes so I keep power down a bit more I seem to be dropping Tully and I'm just left with Schulz hoping that he'll take the front for a while but I really want to press ahead and try and catch Pitt and keep the gap to Foreman but Foreman's power seems to be up in the 5 watts per kilogram range, whereas Schulz is down in the 
So I decided to put down the power a bit, test him if he's just faking, or whether he's actually got it, and see if he follows. And he doesn't respond, so I keep the power down for a while, create a gap, and whilst the gradient is high, keep the power down. That's when it makes most difference. Gap to pit now, 12 seconds, and the gap to form and behind is 8 seconds, no, 6 seconds. So things looking a bit more even. Pitt's been out in the front for a long time, so assumedly he's suffering and his power's wavering between four and five. So if I can keep in the high fours or averaging around that, then maybe I'll catch him. And my power's up and down a bit, but nothing too unusual because I'm quite low cadence and I am quite surgy on these climbs. I, I deliberately surge on the higher gradient sections and take it easier on the lower gradient sections. But also I need to give myself a rest after a bit of a surge. Now I know that there's a bit of a flatter bit after this corner, so I put down the power on the steep bit and as it goes into the flat bit, just drop off. Give myself a little bit of a rest as it gets flatter. And then back on it as it gets steeper. And here we go. There's the accusation. Sticky watts. Now, after having done my surge, I'm kind of suspecting that he is talking about me. But sticky watts is a thing. But it does not manifest itself like this. Sticky watts is whereby someone has power meter pedals and they take advantage of something whereby if there's an absence of a reading then Zwift or perhaps the pedals themselves keep continuing sending a signal that they're putting out the same power that they did when they last had a reading. So if you whack the pedals or something then and then stop and then whack him again then it can read as if you're doing 10 watts per kilogram and then it goes flat and then 10 watts per kilogram again flat perhaps down to zero just with this constant up and down up and down up and down uh, there's also a ridiculous rumor that by varying your power significantly you can gain free speed but it's been tested and been proven to be absolute nonsense uh, and but the rumor continues there's whole threads on it on the Swift forums where people claim that they've seen it and there's just no evidence for it however because some people have more bandwidth in their system so their power gets reported more quickly than others uh, power changes because some people have slightly more surgy power than even power and that can be effective people think that oh they must be cheating there is no way to cheat on my elite direct or trainer as far as I'm aware and I'm certainly not exploiting it if there is I merely what I mainly did was accelerate past him then slow down because I wanted to get past him and then have a rest and then I accelerated into a corner which had high gradient rested on the low gradient and then went harder again on the high gradient and that was it and yet he accused me of being a cheat and it did put a bit of a dampener on what should have been a, a great experience there was some great tactics a um, little bit of a um, poor sportsmanship in not noticing that foreman had 
lost power as it transpired he had actually unclipped on the Northumberland Avenue climb so whether it's unsportsmanlike to take advantage of that I don't know I certainly would have waited I certainly would not have put down the power if I'd seen his power going down to zero uh, whether I should or shouldn't I don't know but I wouldn't have liked to win it that way but yeah this is one of my best ever wins and as we crest it here I'm still thinking is Pitt saving himself and he, kept, he puts out a little surge he said he was just making sure he uh, retained the podium place but uh, I was always paranoid that he was going to do a sprint right at the end and overtake me until about here when I could uh, in the final 100 metres just desperately hoping that this is actually the finish line having some, had some trouble with custom finish lines in the uh, past few days but there we go take the win slightly spoiled by uh, Schultz's uh, poor sportsmanship let me know what you think do you think I'm cheating? as long as you think that I'm not cheating just let me know in the comments below cheerio bye